Hi, this is Martin Brennan from Imagineer Systems, just giving you a quick tip on how to use the Attach Layer tool inside Mocha Pro and Mocha for After Effects version 3. So here we have a clip where we've got a guy talking on a phone, and we want to go ahead and do some roto on his face here. Now, the problem is that when he's talking, the bottom half of his face is moving different to the top half of his face, so we can't just go ahead and do one simple roto unless we want to do extra keyframe work. So how do we get around that using the Attach tool? We can start by just tracking one section of the man's face. So I'm just going to come down to his chin, and I'm going to draw a nice tight roto shape around his chin. And we'll capture a little bit of that beard in there. Just like that. So once we have this shape, we can go ahead and start tracking this roto shape using our planar tracker. So I'm just going to smooth out the shape just a little bit. And then I'm going to come down to perspective just to make sure that all my tracking information is on. And then we'll just zoom out a bit and I'm going to start tracking that. So as this shape is tracking, we're getting all that planar information and we're getting nice subtle warp going on in this shape. We'll see a little bit of throw off because the chin area is not quite planar, so we'll have to tweak a little bit but we're reducing the amount of keyframes by tracking this natural motion underneath his beard here. So once we've got that shape, I'm just going to turn on my mats here. Now let's just zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to turn on my transform tool up here in the uh, main toolbar. And I'm just going to do a little bit of adjustment to get that looking right. So we've got that like so. And I'll just make sure that's all looking okay. We can press the backdash or tilde key to just turn off our overlays to have a look at how that mat's looking. So we can see a little bit of a warp there. So I'm just going to add a couple more tweaks. And that's looking pretty good. So now we've got this shape. We want to do the rest of his jaw here, which is moving slightly different to how his chin is moving. So I'm just going to call this section chin. And I'm going to track another shape. So I'm just going to turn back on my splines using that backdash T. And I'm going to come up to the X-Spline tool again and track a different section. So I'm going to track this section of the beard here. Just like that. And then once we have this shape, we can go ahead and track this section instead. Now I want to turn off my tracking data for my chin because I've already done it. And I'm going to call this area jaw. And we can start tracking this one as well. So we'll turn on perspective for that one and start tracking. So we can see here now that this section is moving slightly differently to the chin section because only this part of his face is moving and not the rapid movement of the chin down here. We can also see up here that the sideburn area is actually moving even different because it's fairly stationary and it's not being adjusted by the jaw all that much. So we have three different sections that are moving quite considerably differently. So once we have that jaw section, that's moving along quite nicely. And again, I can use my backdash key just to check to see how that mat is looking. It's not bad. But the problem is now, obviously, if we turn on all our mats, you can see this horrible gap that we've got. Now we could go ahead and overlay these um, so that they actually overlap each other and you don't see any gaps, but an easier way to do it is just to use the Attach Layer tool, which is next to the Lock Tangents tool here up in the main toolbar. So I'm just going to select that. Let's just turn back on our splines. And I'm just going to come up to a point and just use that Attach tool to link the splines together. So I'm just going through each of the control points and finding a place to add those together. I'm then just going to move this one down a little bit so we get that nice and even down there. And now when we look at it, it's actually got a seamless mat between the two layers that we've created for each track. If again I turn off my uh, layers here, we can see how those are now moving together to create this seamless mat. So I'm going to do one more up here just to hit home the point. I'm going to track another section up here on the top part. So let's just create another, helps if I turn my layers back on, just like that. I'm 
Just smooth that out a little bit. Expand it out. And I'm going to track this section as well. Now, because there isn't too much perspective shift here, I'm going to leave this on a simple shear. And I'm going to call this top section. So we can start tracking this one now. So let's go ahead. So we can see as that jaw moves, how much of a gap is occurring between these two sections. And this is again when the join tool can become really handy because we can then merge these two together and then this mat will stretch to fill in the gap between. So we'll just finish up that track. Then once we've got that, we'll do exactly the same thing. So we can see here there's only two points in the jaw mat and we've got three here for our top section here. Now I could go ahead and delete this point or I can just choose to come up to my add point to spline and add one to the join uh, to the middle of this spline here so we can join it up with the other area. So I'm just going to do that now. I'm going to come back up to my join tool and hook these together. Now it doesn't matter which spline we have chosen but when we actually hook from one spline to another the one that we're dragging to another point will become the uh, child point and the one that's actually connected to will become the parent point. It doesn't matter too much because they all move independently of each other regardless of which one I select. But just so you know that's how it's all parented together. And once again we can see that is now being moved correctly with that attached layer. So if again if I just turn off my splines and we can zoom out a little bit you can see how we're starting to build up this nice seamless mat from a few different tracks and getting that nice natural motion that we're getting with the planar tracking data. Using this method we can start to build up really complicated mats using natural motion from various sections in your footage. It's a really nice clean way to do it because you're only using a minimal amount of keyframes but still getting that planar tracking information to help with the rest of your mats. So that's how to use the Attach tool inside Mocha Pro and Mocha for After Effects version 3. This has been Martin Brennan for Imagineer Systems.